Talk to live with the guests and the guests and the guests and the Welcome to this week's segment of Dialogue Houston. I'm your host, Lawrence Payne. To our regular viewing audience, welcome. To those joining us for the first time for HCC's TV Dialogue Houston, we're here now every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 a.m. and again at 6 p.m., Saturday afternoons at 3 p.m. As always, in the top of the hour, let me thank you for your thoughtful emails, calls, and text messages concerning previous shows we've aired here on HCC TV, but particularly your great ideas for thoughts, for guests, subjects, and issues to be, coming, to be covered rather on upcoming segments of Dialogue Houston. For after all, this is your community affairs, public affairs show here on HCC TV, proudly now in its 25th season, thanks to you. We're going to have a great 25th year season with some great guests coming up, some great surprise, surprises as we go forward also. Uh, in the new year coming, and we're going to really talk about the future of Houston from a perspective of where we're going as humanity, as a group of Houstonians trying to embrace each other more in this great diverse city that we live in. We have a great show planned for you today. We're going to look at an organization that's going to help us navigate this changing Houston, the changing demographics, the changing thoughts and feelings of Houstonians and perspective and ideas on a myriad of issues. To do that, it takes technology, and it takes technology in a very special way to be able to address all of these issues. The organization is called Humanity. It is our good friend, Ryan Alexander Thomas, who is the founder and CEO. It is so great to have him here and to, tell, to talk to us about Humanity and tell us all the great stuff that this company can do for us in relationship to each other and understanding what some of the issues and challenges are going forward in a great city. Ryan, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me again. I appreciate right. that. Uh, I wanted to do a follow-up with you. We had you on when you first came to Houston and kind of breached this wonderful issue of what this humanity might look like for Houston, but now you really have enough time to really now get into some deep things within the city and some issues, so we'll bring us up to speed. Yes, yeah, so we've been accepted into the ION Smart City Accelerator, so wonderful. that is yep. put on by the city of Houston and Station Houston. The accelerator focuses on, as you're saying, really creating sustainable changes and creating technology that makes Houston a more resilient city. You have all sorts of companies that are really making not just city operations smoother, but improving the citizens' lives. And our company, we focus, again, on really organizing and, co and connecting community needs to resources in real time. So we looked at what can we do for the city of Houston? And right now we're working with the Complete Communities Office in order to understand how can we really figure out what does the individual neighborhood need? What does the individual resident need? How can we put all these needs together? And then how can we organize people to say, hey, you need to do this little part here. You need to do this little part here. So instead of just everyone mm -hmm. randomly trying to you know, right. donate money, randomly volunteering, we can actually very focused. We can coordinate millions of individual actions towards these large common goals. So we're working with Complete Communities, 311, the Super Neighborhoods, and to an addition of other organizations to really change Houston for the better. And just in case, we, because we featured uh, Complete Communities we showed before, uh, Mayor Turner has five original neighborhoods and communities on the Complete Communities. We've now added five new ones uh, to look at really trying to equalize services, equalize quality of life, equalize quality of experience, quality of opportunity in all of these neighborhoods together. And this is a great undertaking because there's such different, vast differences in these neighborhoods and communities to be able to have a platform that allows you to look at all the, all the information data disaggregated and to really make some sense out of it for each community neighborhood by neighborhood is so important. Absolutely, and it, it's not that people don't care. People are going out yes. volunteering. People want to help their passionate community. about it. They really want to help their community right. but it's, it's not that we don't have enough resources it's just that the resources really aren't connecting to the needs and that stems from just not knowing who needs help mm -hmm. who's doing what and what needs to be done as a whole so looking at complete communities one of the main things is understanding that there's parts of the area that that could be better we we might have a lot of potholes we might have you know dirty parks we might have low low income housing we food need deserts the whole, food desert. whole, whole we need revitalization yards. but it's very difficult to understand in real time what are all these needs mm -hmm. what does my community need and where do i fit in in helping them but humanity is a platform that could be utilized in order to say hey this is where we have food shortages this is where we need you know you have neglected infrastructure these are the homes that have been flooded mm -hmm. this is exactly how many water bottles we need during a time of 
crisis. And now we can organize and solve these problems in real time instead of waiting years for this outside assistance. We had, as, as part of the accelerator, we had the uh, chief resiliency officer come and she said something very powerful, which was, your neighbor is your first responder in the mm -hmm. city of Houston. And that stuck with me because your neighbor really is the person that you would turn to in a time of crisis. Right. But, but right now, there's no way to understand what does your neighbor need and how can you help your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Humanity is a platform that allows you to say, I have this to give, you need that over here, let me help you. Right. Or this is what I need from my city. And you're working with the super neighborhoods uh, who really, those who have really been active, engaged, particularly in this post-Harvey environment, are still trying to figure out some of the things from Harvey and we're two years into this. Tell us how that, that's been working. So it has been work, working very well. <laughs> um, some, some of the things that... It's uh, challenging to, it, to, it's, to coordinate it's all that. All that's, it, indeed, and it, it's, it stems down to what does every individual person need? When, someone is, when someone's house is flooded, they will reach out maybe through GoFundMe, Facebook, Twitter. They right. might call 311 and send a letter to a council member. I'm sure you've probably gotten contact from plenty yes. of the organizations <laughs> around say, yeah. hey, please help me with this. Right. And people give, people donate, people want to help. But when somebody like the city has to report, this is what we've done in order to maybe get money from FEMA, outside help, neighboring cities. Yep. It's incredibly difficult to aggregate what exactly has been done and there's no way to do it. Yep. But again, we're providing that, that coordination for the city so not only can we get help faster, right. but we can record everything that's been done so the city can get money faster so we can, re, so we can restabilize our right. ecosystem. And the money is coming. It's a slow process from Absolutely. the feds to the state to the state to the city and all that stuff. But, but in, in, in lieu of, not in lieu of that, until all that happens, the, the first responders being your neighbors, being your community, what we've told people always, there, there are two things you need immediately. You need a bunch of people who can do two things, cut out sheetrock and pull up carpet. You don't, you don't have to degree, you don't have to have a plan, you don't have to have anything, just need hands and bodies to do that quickly because we found out the mold stuff that took over quickly when people waited and hesitated to do those two simple things end up causing more health issues down the road than anything else. So it's a, as you said, it's a matching really of the need, Absolutely. the concern, the immediacy of it, those things that are short-term, mid-term, and long-term, we can space those out. But there are some things that can be done very quickly. If we know that there's a need there, we can match it with the right resources. Absolutely. And that's, that's again, one of the main reasons that we wanted to come to Houston because Houston has, they, they, they're looking for technology because they recognize, they're, Houston is trying to solve a lot of these issues. But what they, what they lack is a, is a lot of the coordination. Right. So again, this par part of the accelerator is to really make Houston a more resilient city. So understanding how we can connect these needs to these resources. How can we help an organization organize their community? And how can we allow a resident to play a more active role in shaping what civic engagement looks like? Instead of just being a passive recipient yeah. of the powers that be, right. Right. they can now say, this is what I need for my community. This is what I need for my household. Here's how we can work together to achieve this. And it is civic engagement at, at a different level and a deeper level to get people really connected. Because the simple thing is, we, we keep referring to 311. 311 is not built for this kind of stuff. It has a purpose and role and function that it, that it serves, and it does Absolutely. it pretty well. Absolutely. In responding to potholes and all the, the other. T but you need a different kind of platform to do the kind of responsiveness that you're talking about in this area. This is where this comes in, does it not? Absolutely. One of, one of the main things that we, we show mm. is that there's so many services that go un unutilized, so many resources that go unutilized. Half a donated clothes and food go to waste simply right. because people don't know that it exists and it doesn't get to the right place. So looking at 311, there's so many services that city provides and people would love to be able to, to, right. to, to get right. those services, but there's not a market-facing platform that says, here's everything the city's going to do, here's everyone that needs it, and connects it. Yeah. You have you know, contact information on, on very right. deep bedded right. you know, web pages of city government but that's not the, that's not the right. world we live in. Right. We need immediate, what, what can we do, who's doing what, and how are we gonna do it? So in a practical sense, there's a platform that allows all this information to be fed into, figure out how to, how to put it in the right categories, and then feed it back out to the people who need the, need the services. Absolutely, when an organization joins Humanity, we mm -hmm. ask, what services do you provide for, to, your, to your city, if, if any? And you might provide job training. You might mm -hmm. provide you know, in, income inequality, all, all sorts of things from providing food, services for kids. And when these services are listed, now a resident can say, 
okay, I need this type of service. Mm -hmm. What organizations provide this? Okay, I need this thing from this organization. That organization is notified and now can be added to a project. Because the thing is that when somebody needs a, a resource that multiple organizations want to provide, all these organizations have to open investigation cycles and mm -hmm. figure out, okay, am I doing that or is someone else doing that? There's no coordination and right. that's what leads to so much waste in the industry today. We remove 90% of this waste simply by saying, this organization is going to take care of these needs. Mm -hmm. You need to take care of those. These are the resources we have. Here's what we need from outside communities to get this right. done. Right. And that's going to be even more important going forward because we depend on technology so much to answer and solve most of our problems. If I have it in the palm of my hand, the platform that I can now pull up and utilize, I can really respond and figure out, do I need a service or can I provide a service? Because sometimes it's both to be able to be on both sides, to be the recipient and the giver. Uh, and I think it's important that people can f find a role for them to play in this environment going forward to helping neighbor. It even talks about the, in, in its own way the question of who's my neighbor and how do I serve humanity in my greater community because that's where we're all headed anyway. Absolutely. You know, you, you bring up a good point, which is people have things to give, but yep. they just don't know what to do with exactly. it. Exactly. I didn't know that somebody up the street needed this item. If, we're, <clears throat> if we have a hurricane and I'm able to provide emergency transportation for somebody, someone isn't. Right. Right now, making that connection is very, very difficult. And it's all these little connections that really just bring us closer together as a community. Yep. Because it's, we realize that, yes, we can be self-sufficient. We can self-organize. We can understand and we can, re we can revitalize our neighborhoods and not have to wait for the powers that be. We can take control of ourselves. Taking control, uh, that's a good note for us to stop on it. We're going to take a small pause and break. When we come back, we're going to be joined by uh, a colleague and a partner in this wonderful exercise of Ryan's. Uh, and she has her own great story to tell about how this fits in in her world and what she's doing through her own company to help understand how to make this all work. Because it is a question now uh, of how to utilize this wonderful thing and tool we have as technology to do a better job of human beings being in the equation with the help of technology to be of service to fellow human beings in a very productive, very productive and positive way. Please stay tuned. We're going to take a small pause and break, and we'll be right back. I don't know an industry today that doesn't rely on some amount of coding to run their business. Coding is the 21st century equivalent of the English language. And our particular flavor of this is the iOS Coding and Design School. And Apple's been very supportive and in fact joined with us to roll out the start of this Swift programming initiative. So it's a great opportunity to combine creativity with science and technology contributing to this app economy. HCC. So many degrees, so little tuition. Register today at hccs.edu slash now. Welcome back to this week's segment of Dialogue Houston. If you're with us for the first part of the show, you know we've been having a great conversation with our friend Ryan Alexander Thomas, who's the founder and CEO of Humanity, uh, that talks about these wonderful platforms now of helping people with resources to give and services and needs to be given. So it's a matching thing between the server and the giver and the receiver. And it's just a wonderful thing because it's all about technology. And that's why we love these young people and entrepreneurs who are creating all this great new stuff. Joining Ryan on the set is Natasha Malahalo, who is the founder and CEO of Weezer Inc., who has a whole nother take on this as a accelerated colleague. Her company creates, I love this title, Fun, fast, and easy smart city surveys that customers actually enjoy completing, which has to be a challenge because nobody enjoys completing a survey, but you've made it fun. Yes, thank you so much for having me. Good to yes. have you. 
So Wiser creates surveys that look and feel like games um, because, as you know, surveys, people, no one really takes them now. Um, but what's interesting about what we're doing here in Houston is that we're placing them on the Wi-Fi uh -huh. um, because our surveys are so fun, fast, and easy. We can you know, quickly engage with someone when they connect to the Wi-Fi and collect some feedback for the city and for the mayor um, and for you know, different people in government mm -hmm. on just what are affecting locals and visitors around the city. How much time uh, on average does it take to complete? To complete? On so on average, it's we can do 25 questions in 60 seconds. For the Wi-Fi surveys, we tell our clients uh, 25 to 30 seconds. Well, anybody will do that. Anybody yeah. be willing to do those? Yes. Uh, it's those long ones that we don't like. Right. That exactly. Nobody like. <laughs> and when you com when you collect all this data and, and crunch it down. What's, what's, uh, how, how are we utilizing it, I guess, is the way to look. Yes, so, and that's what's really unique. So we've developed artificial intelligence to turn all of that feedback data into a live report card. Ah. And so for the stakeholders, our, our clients, all they're seeing is A, B, C, D, or F. They're not seeing any bar graphs, no pie charts. And so it's very easy for them to quickly see where their strengths and weaknesses are um, around the city. That should be very telling. Yes. Because there are different pockets of the city that are disproportionately affected, and, and so I guess you've been, when you begin to see the, the snapshot in the dashboard, it becomes very clear where the weak links are. Yes, exactly. And so the surveys, they touch on a wide variety of things, so job opportunities, mm -hmm. traffic, uh, road conditions, education, I mean, just everything that you could think of that affects city life. And so you can see how it affects different neighborhoods all over the city of Houston. Uh, among the mayor's uh, complete communities, the original five and the, and the new five, what's been, just for example, what's, what's been some of those glaring things that have popped up? So, um, from top of, my, top of my head, I can think of is uh, public transit uh -huh. has been an issue that's been reported. Um, I think road conditions, yes. this is why I brought yes. that up, uh, road conditions. Um, we still I, have I, potholes. Yep, there's a lot of potholes here in Houston. Yeah. And um, we try to be on top of it, and the mayor turn <laughs> has done a better job than anybody in trying to get them done, but this is just a city of the way we got all these cars and all these drivers every day. It's yeah. going to happen. Right, exactly. Um, and then I think education was like the top uh, yeah. running I'm not surprised that those are the three. Uh, uh, the issue of transportation going back to the 80s when we really were scrambling ourselves with new people in traffic and cars, we're getting almost back to that same level mm -hmm. that we had in, in the 80s. So something obviously has to be done. Yeah. The city is, is, we love our cars. We have a love affair with our cars. So mass transit and more rails, eh, people uh, not too keen on that, but we gotta do something. Right, right. And I think it becomes, as the surveys are probably showing very clearly, it's neighborhood by neighborhood. Everybody has different needs. It right. may be rail, it may be bus, it may be a feeder, it may be a connector. Right. It may be a simple little thing that takes you from the bus over to the rail or something. Right. But we gotta do something. Right, exactly. And that's, and that's really like our goal is just, and that's why the company's name Wiser is right. because we wanna help you become ah, wiser. Be smarter. Yes, uh -huh. as a business, as an organization, right. and then at least make incremental improvements. Um, I've always told like our clients in the past that perfect businesses or perfect cities are not possible, but you can always make small incremental improvements like towards yeah. something better. Because, you know, I, was, I had uh, a guest on, I guess, a couple of years ago. She was telling me about her commute from home to work on the bus, two hours. Oh, gosh. Two hours every day, one way, two hours every day to get there, two hours to come oh, back. Oh, wow. And she said, I got to do it because that's the best job I have that pays the most on that side of town. Mm -hmm. I could get a job that pays less on this side of town, but I, it's affecting my family. But a two-hour commute every morning and every evening, we can do better than that. Right. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. Absolutely yeah. agree. And so the question becomes for transportation, potholes, and definitely education. <laughs> the fix has to be neighborhood by neighborhood. Right. It's the citizens being empowered to do what they can do and city government then doing its part, along with county government, doing their part to help augment what the citizens can't do alone. Right. But again, back to Ryan's point earlier, we have to be able to match all that together. Right. That's the beauty of having the technology now to be able right. to do that. We haven't been able to do that in the past. Right, exactly. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons that I was very interested in partnering with Wiser right. is because yep. as we help organizations, help nonprofits, and help the you know, council members really understand their community and make these changes, you know, even with the complete communities, right. Wiser is, is a company that could help do that sentiment analysis mm -hmm. to say, this mm -hmm. is where we were before, this is where we are after. Right. You, they can really measure the improvement the city's making. That, and that's, that's one of the reasons that I think is one, a great company to be with. And Natasha, okay. to be, to be da uh, data driven is so important right. because historically in a lot of these communities, we're so wrapped up into the emotion of it 
right. of the past and the history about what hadn't happened, why it hadn't happened, to kind of remove or at least desensitize some of that emotion around these issues and have the data that really shows and then to be able to match the potential resources to actually do an effective change becomes very important because the frustration level in a lot of these communities is very high. It, oh, exactly, and that's kind of, that's exactly, I mean, I'm sure Brian can talk about the data science all day, but um, in, when you're collecting feedback, a hundred different people are gonna give you a hundred different things that they're having a problem with, mm -hmm. you know, and the uh, beauty of what we do is like we help you identify what actually out of that feedback is worth taking action on. Right. And there's like several things that you could do is like, is this actually affecting um, turnover? Like are people leaving Houston because some of these problems? Are people losing jobs? Like mm -hmm. they're not able to, you know, uh, have these jobs right. on the other side of town right. because of some of these issues and so like helping uh, that's kind of what we also do is like helping them analyze all of this feedback data so it's practical government. realistic about what are actionable items that, exactly. that can be done and things can be changed in this area and i think i said earlier in the first segment it's it's important for citizens to break down stuff in short term midterm and long term exactly. what is practical now can do now what we can do a little later what needs to be because we get these false expectations of what can be done. Right. I always say, it's, it's a cliche, but it's an important one, go for the lowest hanging fruit. Right. Pick an issue that you know you can solve and resolve right. very in a short term because success breeds success. Now as a community member, as a resident, I see something actually happening, changing and occurring. That gives me hope and optimism that now the next thing that is in the midterm, long term goals will also be accomplished. Right, exactly. And that's what all we're looking for really in the neighborhood. Right. Right. Absolutely, and that's, and that's one of the things that Smart City Accelerator wants to bring to the city of Houston. As we were talking about the other day, you know, 2020 is the year for vision. Right, right? And, and let's use it wisely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. and, so, and so the Ion Smart City Accelerator is looking to say, what technology can we bring? What partnerships can we make between these technologies? How can we leverage this in order to find out what the, cit what the city needs, mm -hmm. and then how are we going to connect these needs and resources to make the city more sustainable, right. to make it smarter, to make it more livable? Well, you know, again, to play off of the, the name of the company, to be smart and to be wiser in this environment, it really takes those two words, which we apply to other disciplines, but it applies here too, a lot of intentionality and mindfulness. We really have to then take what we have from the data, the research, the surveys, and really be practical about what's doable. Right. And I think that's where we fall down all the time. Right. We all want them all to be equal and be done now because they're all equally important. No, we got to figure out how to, that list has to have some A, B, C's, and D's in right. priority. Right, right, exactly. And that's, and that's kind of what we, uh, as part of our technology, that's what we do is highlight things are, that are actionable right now and yep. things that are actionable in three months that you might want to take a look at. But you shouldn't do that until you highlight, like you actually address these priority and items. And what you can do yourself in right. your community. You exactly. may not even need any city or government help or departmental yeah. help. You can, if you organize a group of people to go to the task and accomplish the task, then exactly. you've done it. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. So I think the question becomes more and more from the sense of citizenship, responsibility of citizens in a community, in a democracy as citizen, what is my role? That civic engagement piece we talked about. What increasingly is my role, my responsibility, my commitment, my accountability to doing those things in my community neighbor that, I, that we can do together? And so I think that the question becomes, we're talking about council districts, Council districts in the city vary vastly. I mean, from one to the other, from one side of town, from zip code to zip code. You know, it's kind of like that old adage, adage when you're trying to raise children. To treat all children equally, you have to treat them differently, right? So we need to figure out what may, not, what may apply and not apply to this district or this community that applies to this one, because you keep talking about equality and equity. Some things are not basically done on equality and equity. It's done on other factors that still gets the job done. So that's what I think this, this wonderful data gives us a chance to really look at, too. Right. A deeper dive. Right, absolutely, yeah. So where do you see this going? Let's just put our, put our, our wiser ball on now uh, and, and look at Vision 2020 uh, and project out a little bit. Where do you see this all headed? What, what do you think is going to be the next practical steps of all of this? Yeah, so um, our goal is, to, our vision for Wiser is to be in every airport, in every smart city. So basically, ah. anything that has free Wi-Fi, we want our surveys to be on the well, Wi-Fi. Like like because Wi-Fi is becoming like a public utility. It's almost like water and electricity. Well, that's true. We, need, we don't you know, think about it that way, but it's true. Yes, yeah. and so everybody, you know, is, is, 
Wi-Fi is becoming more and more accessible mm -hmm. to people. And so um, we want to be on that Wi-Fi because you can touch more people. Uh, and we work with a lot of different cities. And um, some of the things that cities come to us are always, how do we reach more underrepresented uh, demographics? Mm -hmm. Like, how do we reach more people of color? How do we get people within, within so certain social economic statuses that we're not hearing from? And it's through Wi-Fi. I mean, yeah. everybody, no matter what your background or economic status is, you're connecting to the Wi-Fi, especially if it's free somewhere at some point right. in your journey throughout the city. And so um, we want to be on the Wi-Fi. And when you are connected, we want to get your feedback about how the city is treating you. And so that for us is like the vision and the plan is to be in every airport, every smart city. I like that. And Wi-Fi is still not available throughout. Right. So I like it that you put it in the, in the term of a public utility, though. It is a core value. It's a core service. It's a core thing. Uh, and now I think going forward to talk about it as that, water, sewer, police, and fire, and Wi-Fi. Right. Those five things are just basic to every community neighborhood. We all should have them, we all need them, right. because it's not optional anymore not to be connected. Right, right, exactly. And actually, so my, uh, my co-founder told me a story. He's from Arkansas, and he mm -hmm. said he knew someone in Arkansas that her daughter uh, was applying for college on her cell phone because they didn't have Wi-Fi in the house. And so it was wow. faster to right. apply to use her cell phone. Yeah. And like, can you, if you can imagine, uh, you know, people in San Francisco, they have free Wi-Fi all over the city. So you yeah. have compa the comparison. One of the first, yeah. wasn't it? Yes, yeah. exactly. And so the comparison, I mean, this now affects life, like your life cycles and generations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because someone is applying for college on a cell phone versus someone that has free Wi-Fi everywhere. On that point, we're going to have to end, but that's a good one to end on. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're going to have to get out of here, Ryan. We thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Natasha, thank you. Thank we, we're going to have to have you on again in the future to kind of talk about this some more because I'm fascinated about uh, what your company can do. I'm uh, just thinking of other ways to apply what, what you do to other, other issues and things. So we're going to be talking about that. We've got to get out of here for now. Let me end on this quick little note. Uh, I, I met a gentleman the other day uh, at church that told me he has one of those high water vehicles, uh, uh, one of those pickup trucks that have the big tires and raised up real high. He said he bought it after Harvey to be prepared for the next hurricane to serve his neighbors and his community to be able to rescue people if needed and serve people. It is not the vehicle he drives every day. It is in his garage that he built specially for the truck. And it sits there. He warms it up, drives it around a little bit to keep it running and keep it in operational function. But he has it just when he needs it for when something occurs. Now, I thought that was a great example of a neighbor being concerned about his fellow neighbors he has the wherewithal, the resources to be able to do this. He says, it's not my everyday vehicle. I got another vehicle. My wife has a vehicle. I have a vehicle. And this is just there for when we need it. I think that's where it's all headed. Data and information gives us the ability to know what the needs are, to match the need with the resources of the people who need it. I have the ability to give so I can be that person that serves, so on and so on. We're going to play this out in the next few weeks on Dialogue Houston. We've got to get out of here for now. But Follow us, follow this. We're going to make sure all the information was on the, on the screen so you know how to get in touch with these wonderful people. And we're going to continue this dialogue about the future of Houston together from a humanity standpoint of helping and serving each other. Until then, we look forward to you joining us in future segments. Until then, as always, peace, power, and love.